I'm Piggy. We will learn how to draw and how to rig and animate. Piggy course. Welcome to this introduction to 2D bone animation with Blender and Grease Pencil. By the end of it, you will know how to do simple animation and use most of the animation tools and features inside Blender. Optimizing bones for animation, locking and managing transform channels, understanding and managing keyframes, creating a walk cycle and other animations, understanding interpolation modes and the graph editor, creating and managing actions, combining animations in the NLA editor, making the mouth move with sound and countless tips and tricks. You will learn here everything you need to animate the piggy but you can support me by buying the extended version from my gumroad. The extended course goes at a slower pace for 3 hours covering drawing, rigging and animation and packs some extra blender and grease pencil tips and tricks. The rigged piggy character is included in the download or you can buy it separately. In part 5 we will prepare the armature for animation, learn good practices to create and manage keyframes frames, create our first action and walk cycle, learn interpolation modes and how to use the graph editor. We start first by tweaking some bones in this character. This is a proof that nothing is perfect and that every rig can be improved. In most bones here, the axis that is facing the camera, the global Y axis, is Z, except for this bone, the body root and the root and the shadow. I think it's because I duplicated these two from this one. Having the Z axis facing the camera in all of the bones will avoid us some confusion. This axis is important because it is the one we will use to rotate the bones. So if you know that all the bones use the local Z to rotate, it will make our life easier. Let's select this bone and go to edit mode, tab, and then do N to display this side menu here and go to this roll value here. Let's go closer. Maybe we hide our piggy. If you turn this value here, if you change it, you see that the Z is rotating and we want it to be like this facing the camera. So the value here is minus 90. So just type minus 90, enter. We try to do the same for the root, so minus 90 again. And now for the shadow, it is already minus 90, maybe zero. Zero, make it face the other side. So I guess it's 180. It's done, but now we'll need to fix some drivers. Let's unhide the piggy again. Let's go back to pause mode, tab, zero to go to camera view. And now if you take this bone and move it up, you see that the shadow is not getting smaller anymore. So let's open the drivers panel. Let's select it. Disable this arrow here to see all the drivers and choose the drivers tab here. Then we go to the shadow. You see that it's using the Z location axis of our body root. And now it changed. Now it is the local X and not the Z. So we change this to X location and this one to, to X location. And now our shadow drivers should work. No, it's not working. It's working only on the Y scale here and not on the Z. And that is because our axes have changed in this bone too. So previously it was Y and Z and now it is Y and X. So let's select this bone, go to the Z driver here, right click and do copy driver and then go here right click again and do past driver and then we go to the Z here right click and do not delete drivers because it deletes everything so control Z but delete single driver and now let's test again G and yes let's do right click here and do join areas the second thing we will do is to change the rotation mode of our bones from quaternion to Euler Quaternion is useful for 3D rigging and you see that it has four values instead of just three but in 2D rigging it just adds extra confusion so you can change manually for each bone but it is of course tedious so we will do A to select all the bones and then control R so R for rotation control R and here set rotation mode we change it to one of the Eulers this one is fine left click and now all the bones use Euler instead of Quaternion. Now again to make our life easier later, we will start locking the channels that we will not need for animation. So for example, if you select this ice bone here, you see all these channels here for scale, for location and for rotation. But for some bones, we will need some of these and not others. So let's lock the ones we don't need here. I think for this one, we only need the local X and local Y location. We won't need to rotate this bone. We don't also need to move it in the Z, the local Z axis, we don't need to have this bone go like G, Y, go like from front to back. We don't need to scale it either, S, because we can scale each eye 
individually or we do X here and scale them together. Selecting this bone again, zero back to camera view. We disable the Z location and we disable rotation, all three channels. And for scale, also we disable scale. Then we go to one of these eyes here. Rotating around eye is useless, but what if, for example, we resize the eye like this and then we rotated the Z axis. So we can have this effect here. We can have reptilian eyes. Let's change this value back, this to zero and this to one. So I guess I will keep the scale and lock only the Z because the Z means that it will scale our eyes in this axis and we don't need that. And for rotation, we will keep only the Z. And for location, also keep the local X and Y and the Zable Z. So you see that the axis that we need in location and in scale is the one that we don't need in rotation and vice versa. So the Z is the one needed for rotation, but the Z is not needed in location and in scale. For the other eye, we do the same. Lock this one, this one, this one, and the Z here. For this one, you see that we already locked the Y and Z because we want to move it only on its local X axis. And this is just a control bone. So we don't need rotation and we don't need scale. So we lock everything. For this one, we do the same. And then let's go to the nose and it's also a control bone so we do the same then to the mouth already has drivers for the scale and we don't need z scaling for rotation we only need the z we may want to have an effect like this and for location we don't need the z and then for the control bones again we lock everything the other one we reach the head bone so the head bone will rotate the head and move the head and also scale the head so i guess we disable Z location and Z scale, and we keep only Z rotation here. So the lock-in will have two purposes. The first purpose, it will allow us to have a cleaner timeline with all the user's channels not keyframed. And the second purpose is that even if we are in wrong angle here and we try to rotate the head bone, it will rotate just on its local Z axis. If we don't lock these two and we rotate from this angle here, you see that we have this mess here zero back to camera view and alt r then we lock again the x and y and keep only the z now to the arms i guess it's the same this one will be able to move and to rotate so we lock the z here we lock the y and x here and we lock the z here for this one location is disabled because it is parented to this guy and it is connected to it so it can't move by its arm but we still will lock these three for rotation we keep only the z i don't know if we really need scale for these bones so maybe we just disable scale for this one and allow only this bone to scale the arms now to this control bone again we disable everything and here we just do the same with it here to the other bones for this one we lock this 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 and this and for this one we lock almost everything we keep only the z rotation so all these and all these and for this one we lock everything except the x location now for the body bone i guess it's the same as the head bone z x y rotation and z scale for this one, also we disable the Z, we disable the X and Y rotation. And for scale, I don't know if we will use this guy to scale. I guess I will lock it, lock the scale. And if we need it, we can unlock it later. Now for the leg, we really don't use rotation for this guy, but we can use location. So I think I will disable rotation. Do we need scale for this? I think I will keep scale, disable the Z scale. And for location, we disable the Z also. We do the same here. I think this one won't need any channels to be enabled, so we lock everything and we do the same here. Then to this control bone, this one will just need to move from side to side. So it's the Y axis, so we disable everything except the Y location and we do the same here. Let's disable the X here, so let's move this guy and now it moves on the Y location only. Now for the foot. Location is disabled, but we will still lock it. Rotation is controlled by this bone, so we disable location. And scale, yes, we can scale the foot with this. So we disable only the Z. And we do the same for this foot, so we disable all these and disable the Z. Now for the IK, so the IK will need its Z rotation, so we disable these two. It will need its location except the Z, of course. And then how about scale? Now we don't need scale for this one, except to scale the bone itself. So we disable scale and we do the same here. So these three and these three. Yes. How about the shadow? The shadow is using drivers for scale and we don't need to scale the Z axis. And for rotation, yes, we can rotate this bone. So we keep only the Z. And then for location, I think I'll keep only the local Y to be able to move it vertically. 
and the side movement is controlled by this bone so we'll only keep the y so lock these two and now there only remains the root bone so do we need to change the location of the root bone of course so we disable only the z the scale yes it can scale our character but i think scaling the whole character should be done in object mode instead and also moving the character except for very slight movements because if you move the character using this bone you will get far from its origin point let's go to object mode here in object mode we can move the character and we can scale it too and the origin of the armature and of our character stays in its place back to pause mode control tab so i think i will disable scale and the rotation yeah we may need to rotate this bone slightly so we disable only the x and y now we can enable auto key in here so that blender creates keyframes automatically whenever you move a bone and then we select the head bone for example and do a rotation so r and rotate a little bit and then left click and we have a problem because all the channels were keyed, even the ones that we locked. Here we'll need some tricks that I learned from a video by Pierrick Pico. He's got this video of 13 minutes. If you want to go deeper into keyframes, watch this video. It's very, very informative. But in this tutorial, we will just take the essential tips and use them for our character. So let's do Control Z, or instead of doing Control Z, maybe we go here from Grease Pencil to Dop Sheet or to Action Editor. And we select this keyframe here and we do XD to remove it and then i think i do alt r to set the rotation back to its place and you see that doing alt r also creates a keyframe and for all three channels of rotation if you do alt g even if we never move the bone it also creates these keyframes when we have auto key in enabled so be careful with this let's remove the keyframes again select and xd and now we need to go here to edit preferences animation and enable this one only insert available available keyframes means that blender will insert only keyframes for the channels that were already keyed so here for example if we right click and insert a single keyframe for this channel the z rotation channel and then we go forward we move this bone you see that even if we moved it, it didn't create a channel for location, but it did create a channel for Z rotation because it was an available channel, a channel that was already keyed. And we can go here and rotate and also it adds a channel for only the available ones but before being able to key available channels of course we need to have available channels let's delete these keys they are all selected so xd again and let's go back to frame one shift left arrow and we go here in the timeline panel here under key in and in active key in set we change to whole character so we go down and we find here whole character let's disable auto key in and do alt r alt g and enable it again now if you go to the viewport and do i with the whole character key inset enabled here blender will add keyframes for all the bones of the character if you do a here you can see all the bones here that were keyed and in each bone only the channels that are unlocked were keyed and now we have available keyframes for all the channels that we need we are in action editor and you see that we have an action here in which all these bones were keyed so we name this one needed dot channels enter and now we add a fake user so that we don't lose this action even if it's not used by our piggy and this will be our base action whenever we want to animate our piggy now we can go to k in here and remove whole character by hitting this x here now if you hit I on the viewport, it no longer adds keyframes directly, but it gives you this menu in which you can add keys for available for location, rotation, or a combination of location, rotation, or everything, and even custom properties. And we can override anything. So for example, if you do location here, you see that it adds location even for the locked channels. Let's do control Z. And now I want to create a walk cycle. So first let's duplicate this channel so we don't lose it. We go to this icon here, we click on it, we change it to walk.cycle, enter. And we enable fake user. So let's start making the piggy walk in it. G, move it here, rotate it a little bit. Let's move this guy down, G, Z, like this. And yes, I try to stick this foot on this x-axis here and then we need to flip this leg so we select this bone g and move it here maybe move this one too now we select this bone if it's not selected click on it again or ik bone and move this one here and rotate now the arms 
rotates, rotate this one. And here I want to flip the hand. Either you rotate this bone like 180 degrees or you scale to minus one. So you see we have this local X axis here of this bone. Let's change the scale here to minus one. Rotate and rotate this bone. Now we select all the bones A and we move to frame 12. Let's left click here and deselect everything. And you see if you click on one of the dots, you will select only the keyframe for one of the bones. But if you click on the summary one, it will select all the keyframes. So we do shift D to duplicate and duplicate it to frame 12. And here we start doing the opposite pose. So we rotate this one, maybe move it a little bit inside the body. And we do the opposite here, R and then G and then the legs we should select this bone so click again and then shift select this one and then G X and move it here and then this one shift select this one G X and move it here now we make the same pose but with flipped legs so this leg here we try to give it the same pose as this one so we move this guy here and rotate it you can switch between frames by hitting the up and down arrows on your keyboard so up down it's not working it should work even if the cursor is on the viewport yes move it up Yes, I think it's not bad. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just something similar. And now we do the other one. So if you select this one and you try to shift select this one, you will select the big bone. But just do again shift and you select all three bones. And then you need to deselect this one. So you do shift again and select it. And this time it will be active and not deselected. And you do again shift left click and now it is deselected. There are other methods that completely went out of my mind when I was recording the tutorial. So you can either select your foot bone and do H to hide it. And now you can select this bone very easily and do whatever you want with it. And then if you need your foot bone again, you do Alt H to unhide it. And another method is to do M. And now we have this menu about changing bone layers. And in this first layer, we have all our bones. But now if you click on the second layer, you see that the bone is gone and now it is on the other layer. So here under object data properties of our armature, you can see here our layers and you see these two dots. So the first dot contains or the first layer contains all of these bones. And if you select the second layer, you see our foot bone is here. So back here and then we can add more bones and reduce the clutter on our armature like these legs bones for example everything is locked here and we won't use them for anything I guess so we select this one and then shift select this one shift select this one and then M and we click on the second layer here and voila escape and you go here here are our bones if you need them for any reason for example to resize the foot or whatever you can find them in the second group and then back to our first group and we have all the bones that we need to use most and if you want to switch layers from the viewport you do shift m and here you can go either here or here now g x and move this here now again click again g and move it here rotate and we do with the up and down arrows to see if we are good i think i need to move this one just a little bit here with g and this one a little bit forward and then we select all the bones and go to frame 25, I think. Maybe we can move these ones to be in the center. Now we can change the end then to frame 24. And you see now, since these keyframes and these are identical, the playhead will go to 24 and comes back to here. And we have a loop in animation of the walk cycle. Of course, this is like a sliding cycle, not a walk cycle. So we need to add more keyframes here. It's mostly about the legs. Let's deselect the bones, left click here, select just one of these and see which leg goes forward and which leg goes backwards. The leg that goes forward will go up and then down again. And the leg that goes back will stay on the ground. This bone will stay on the ground. So we go between these two frames and we try to lower this leg here to hit the ground. And we select the other IK and move this guy up. So now we have this. This is one step. And now again, we see which one goes back and this time it's this one. So we go between these two frames and we get it down with G to touch the floor. And so the other one, and I lost my frame. Maybe we can disable this arrow so that we can see the frame of this bone. So it's here. Let's enable the arrow again and we get this one up. And this is it. We have a walk cycle, a very simple one. One thing we can do when the foot goes up, the body should also go a little bit up. So you select this bone. Or maybe this one. Let's try with this one. G, Z and move it a little bit up. Let's select this bone and go here to this keyframe. Then select this bone again and duplicate this frame to where the playhead is. So shift D 
and yes so the body will go up and then down and then up again and we have this so this is our simple walk cycle now we have some options here that we will see briefly so if you select these keyframes for the ik bones here you can right click and change interpolation from bezier to linear this will make the animation very linear instead of with bezier that starts the animation slow and then it goes faster and then slow again and we have another mod here that is constant and this mod will just switch between states from here to the next frame here and so you have it looks like some funny dance let's change them back to bezier and go to the mouth control bone here the mouth shape bone so if you have a closed mouth in frame one and then in frame 10 you want to go to the last mouth shape so g and go to the last one you don't want the animation to go through all the mouth shapes but you want the mouth to stay closed until this point and it changes to the open mouth we select these two frames right click change to constant and now that is exactly what happens it waits until the frames come and it switches the bone from this position to this position let's do control z control z control z control z to remove that frame let's select our ik bones again shift select and here we can also go and check the graph editor you can either change from here or you do control tab here and here we can see the graphs of our animations and you can see everything if you want or only the channels of the bones selected here we have ikl and ikr if you select one you can select the channels and see that it's the blue one the z one that is animated here too if you can see some of your graphs you can enable normalize and now we can see also the x location clearly and the y location they were so tiny compared to the rotation graph that they were barely visible but now with normalize we can see all three we have these handles and we can move the handles like this we can rotate them with r we can scale with s we can select either the center points or one of these edge points here we can also right click and change the handle type to free or you can do v and change also from here to free and now if you select this point you see that you can no it didn't work i think i switched graph g yes this one was changed to free and now you can move each handle separately Control z i think i will change it back to aligned it's a little bit hard to select keyframes here let's go back to the action editor Control tab let's select yes the y location select all these frames and right click change interpolation to linear and back to the graph editor and you see that it changed to just straight lines here change to constant and now we have this it stays at the same value and then changes the value suddenly at the keyframe and then stays at the same value and then changes value suddenly and again right click change interpolation to bezier and now we have this slow at the beginning and then faster and then slow again and then faster and then slow again so this is it very briefly about interpolation and about the graph editor this is the end of part 5 subscribe leave a like and if you have any questions leave them in the comments section in part 6 we will create more animation actions and combine them in the nla editor then learn several ways to create poses to add to the asset library and how to insert them in our timelines thanks for watching and peace